All right, again, welcome to the workshop. So as I was trying to put together this workshop, I was a little bit um, struggling. Should I cover job search basic first, the foundation knowledge about job search, or should I cover COVID-19 information first? And then I decided that um, I think it probably makes sense to talk a little bit about the, the current job outlook about COVID-19 and the, the challenge and the maybe resource specifically for COVID-19 job search. And then when I start talking about the uh, job search overview, we can probably put the information more into the context of the current um, job, job search and job market. And uh, but I'm going to spend a lot of time, uh, probably the, the, the majority of time this workshop emphasizing the importance of networking and networking resources because uh, COVID or no COVID job search is still the same. And um, it's just a, you know, a challenging job market and you won't be able to just rely on one resource. You really have to expand your effort and expand your um, your reach to online resources that people you know, uh, build new networking contact. Okay, so that's true for any uh, job search in any, uh, under any, any circumstance, but especially important right now. So that's the topic I'm gonna cover today. So now a little bit uh, uh, outlook about the current job market. Um, so hope grounding realism. Things are actually getting a little better. So first, current unemployment rate is 8.4. It's still fairly high, but if you look at this uh, PDF file from uh, bls.gov, that's Bureau of Labor Statistics. Uh, hello. Okay. So this um, uh, chart of unemployment rate. So by May, it was probably the worst and the unemployment unemployment rate have dropped um, steadily since then. And so this is definitely good news. And also more than 14, I just looked at this this morning, more than 1,400 new jobs have been posted on Handshake. Handshake is USD's um, career center's job site and a lot of universities use that as well. So just the past week, there are 1,400 new jobs posted nationwide. And uh, for comparison in April, on average, we probably got 500, 600 jobs per week. And so definitely the, the job market is improving. There are a lot more new jobs coming up. And I also suspect that those jobs never went away, but because of the uncertainty of COVID-19 when it just hit, a lot of hiring were postponed. And so now they gradually come back to the market. So that's just a, a little bit of uh, good news, grounding realism. Still, things are still a little bit tough, but it's improving right now. So now, uh, also think on the positive side, think about by 2030, 80, 18, 85% of jobs have not been invented yet. Things are constantly evolving. And uh, um, since 2005 to the start of COVID-19, companies that provide remote, uh, remote working opportunity have increased by 159%. And uh, post-COVID-19, we definitely see an increase in remote work because a lot of companies maybe originally have hesitation about uh, taking remote workforce and now COVID-19 situation kind of pushed them to adapt to the remote working mode. And uh, e-commerce, well, some industries suffer and some industries may thrive. And so um, think about if you're a YouTube watcher and have you noticed that lately there have been a lot more ads on YouTube and each YouTube video feature two ads and one of them you cannot skip and it wasn't like that before. And so apparently um, because there's such demand, people stay home, they watch online video and uh, give YouTube more leverage to put more ads there. And uh, probably more users are willing to pay premium account to skip ads as well. And similarly, I don't know about you, but my family have been shopping through Amazon a lot, a lot more often lately. And uh, on average, we probably have like two or three packages delivered a, a week. And so those are some uh, industry and business actually are not only not being affected, but actually thriving because of the change of our mode of living. Anything that's uh, digital, remote, and education technology, digital health, e-sport, and those are the industries that may be growing during the current job market. And the uh, trend to comfort, uh, luxury items, and uh, convenience items will likely remain steady. So those, some of those outlooks are provided by 
oops, uh, provided by, sorry, my toolbar is blocking my view. A CFO Leadership Council. And also let's take a look at this. And so I include this link back in April when I hosted this workshop last time. Of course, information has changed, but just to give it a, um, yeah, just give me a view about what kind of, uh, under the impact of COVID-19, who has been, whose hiring has declined and whose hiring has increased. So non-store retailers and the general merchandise stores has increasing hiring for others. Um, if we look at the bottom, apparel manufacturing, motor vehicle parts dealers, and I'm pretty sure that um, general retail stores and tourism, hospitality probably being hit pretty hard as well. So um, actually the next page, you will probably be able to find more updated information from the same website. So the next page, uh, this is a searchable map. So a job posting dashboard. Uh, I'm not sure it's because it's a browser issue. Let me use, let me use my Google Chrome. Okay, so now you'll be able to search uh, in the United States um, the job posting trend by region, by industry, and by occupation, company, and the job title, and the skills related. And so you will be able to um, get a sense of um, in your location, the type of job you're looking for, and how have them been affected by uh, your industry and the job you're looking for, how have them been affected by the COVID-19. So you can look more into details from this website if you want to. Okay, so now a few other tips about uh, job search during COVID-19. And don't be afraid of looking outside your niche or your original dream job. And especially if your dream job is um, starting a small restaurant in a, a tourist spot, and probably it's, it's not going to be very feasible at this time. And uh, if your uh, dream job you have in mind, and it's just not abundant at this time, very hard to find. What's your plan B? And set your priority. What would be absolutely your dream job and what will be acceptable at this moment and uh, what are absolutely off limit. You just simply cannot do that. And so that will be very important um, when you start to navigate your job search, when you want to find the balance between uh, how selective you can be and how long this job search is going to take. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later. So a temporary or contract roles are not a step back. And so you can use temporary employment agencies and uh, a lot of those temporary employment agencies hire job seekers for a short term work from a few weeks to a few months. And the, it's not necessarily a step back. And I can share a story of a, a student who used to work in my office and she used to work in nonprofit AmeriCorps type of organization and uh, her background uh, say international relations. And uh, along the way, she picked up a little bit of book, uh, bookkeeping, uh, bookkeeping uh, experience. So at one point she had to look for a temporary job and uh, uh, nonprofit in San Diego is very hard to find. And so she uh, went through a, uh, actually a staffing agency called Robert Half. You'll probably see quite a few of those uh, Robert Half posting on Handshake. They uh, post a lot of accounting and the finance related temp jobs. And so she started a role as a, like a very entry level accounting type of job. And a couple of years later, when we touched base again, I was helping her to prepare for interview salary negotiation. And I realized that she was probably making twice the money she used to make. Not only that, now she has gained very um, sold after skill if she anytime she wanted to go back to a nonprofit organization and she really had grow as a professional she become much more marketable acquire very useful skill during those past two years that's an example that uh, maybe a temp job or a slight detour from your dream career is not necessarily a setback and especially if you can really take advantage about what you can learn during this period of time so similarly think about your short-term goal versus long-term goal and also if you're looking at job posting and you don't have to meet 100% of the job qualification. And if you meet 70, 80% of the skill and if the primary requirement, uh, you're not missing any skill that's, that's uh, the most essential skill, then apply anyway. And when employers write job posting, job description, that's idealized 
uh, version of the, the job description. And oftentimes the employees cannot find the, the candidate that, that match everything. And if you have about 80%, 70% of skill, and they're likely to consider you as well. But do not window shop and burn bridges. And don't just apply to jobs and uh, going through interview just because you want to see what you can get and have no commitment to actually seriously considering the job. And um, if you ruin your relationship with a recruiter from a certain company and industry, and uh, they may come back to burn you later. So please don't do that. So if you do not have a job at the moment, take advantage of the skill building. Um, during this time, any kind of uh, online learning and uh, for example, like uh, coding bootcamp USD has and uh, LinkedIn has uh, uh, used to code the lingda.com. Now they have LinkedIn learning on many different subjects. And this may be a great time to buff up your professional skills. And uh, um, last but not least, about 80% of the job are filled by your network through networking. It doesn't mean that 80% of the jobs are never posted. And uh, many of those posted jobs may be filled by the candidate that already have connection with the hiring department. So if you're connected with somebody who happened to have a job opportunity, that give you a great advantage over the job seekers out there um, that only apply to jobs online. And also, um, you're not in this alone. So your family members, your close friend, let them know you're doing a job search and then let them know what kind of job you're looking for, any kind of tips, any kind of support, and any kind of connection they can provide, that can be helpful. Um, so again, not long ago, I was working with a graduate student who just uh, started at USD. And so she asked me about, oh, she's just looking for part-time working opportunity at USD. And do I know anything? And so I didn't know anything from the top of my head. I think, oh, a lot of uh, graduate assistantship kind of position are canceled or um, the, the opportunity doesn't look very good, but I did a little bit of search anyway. And I came across a job posting that was actually a, on a very obscure list that's very hard to find. So I shared with that student and that student applied and she got a job. And so um, just because she asked and I look for her, I find something I share with her. And if she didn't ask, she would never even see that job posting. That's just an example. So those are just a few things to keep in mind um, when we're thinking about job searching a challenging market. Okay, so now um, Handshake, like I mentioned earlier, um, online job posting, you can probably start with Handshake and just some really quick tips here. Um, when you use Handshake, right now they, um, so I'm in the Handshake job search mode. I just type cybersecurity as a keyword and um, have to be full time. And right now there are uh, 62 posted. And uh, my recommendation, if you want to use job board like Indeed or Handshake, look for more recent posting. So the posting that's like more than three, four months ago, there's a good chance that they may be canceled already. So we can sort by date posted. And the Handshake actually have this icon, fresh. I think that means that it was posted within two weeks. And uh, so um, if you want to apply to the more recent ones and uh, um, you can look for those ones with icon fresh or you can just sort by date posted. So that's one thing I definitely recommend. And also, um, because at this time, a lot of jobs are probably remote. And so you don't necessarily have to limit your location during your first search. And if you find that a lot of jobs that you're applying to actually remote working is, uh, is possible, then uh, you can definitely expand your geographic location as well. So that's Handshake. And um, career resources during COVID-19. So my office put together this um, web page. Uh, okay, so under Career Development Center, just uh, writing on the landing page, COVID-19 updates. So besides talking about our uh, service availability, and if you scroll down a little bit, career resources during COVID-19. So we put this together. Uh, is there a question I see in the chat? Okay, so thank you for sharing. I've had a lot of better result editing the date posts section on Indeed, either three day or seven days. Okay, so now here are some resources we put together. And uh, um, 
so some of those are articles or videos about how to do your job search in a challenging job market, especially during COVID-19 and companies hiring and not hiring. I think this, this was especially very useful at the beginning when COVID-19 just hit and um, there are several websites started the crowdsource, uh, crowdsource list. And so a user report that my company just laid me up or uh, my company is still hiring. So you know that uh, the company that uh, you're aiming for, whether they're hiring or not. So you can use those as a resource to identify the company that's currently hiring. And how to do a virtual interview, geographical resources, and uh, uh, online uh, continuing education courses, placement service. And some of those, um, like Park Dewey, that's a partner that we paired up. Um, they provide uh, short-term projects and like a mini internship, anywhere from like a, like a 20, 30 hour project to a few week loan. That's why they call that micro internship. All of them are paid. And so during your job search, if you want to keep yourself um, busy, getting experience, you can definitely look into uh, Parker Dewey. That's on our website as well. That's on the, um, the same landing page that I, I just showed you. And uh, permanent placement agencies, temporary placement agencies, those are the staffing agencies that uh, may help you to find temporary employment opportunities and other related webcasts and webinars. So those are some resources specifically we collected for the COVID-19 job search. And the Career Development Center resources, those are more of our general career resources. So some of you are probably already familiar with this, but I definitely want to point that out in case uh, you need to look at some resume samples, for example, if I go to uh, career resources under graduate student, career resources. So Parker Dewey is right there. If you're looking for short-term projects or uh, micro internships. <clears throat> so job and internship search, search tools beside Handshake and there is um, uh, interest drives for international students specifically. And then we also put together a list of uh, job boards specifically for various industries and the resume and the cover letter samples, uh, interview preparation tools, and the team networking and LinkedIn. This is probably most important. I'm gonna cover a little bit more in depth about how to use those three and why they're so important. So those are some of the career resources that um, our, our office provides. And if you need any assistance in your job search, you're more than welcome to make one-on-one -on -one appointment with me or Sue Kelly, both of us uh, see uh, graduate students. And if you recently graduated, you will be also be able to make an uh, appointment with um, uh, Dee Kalar, and she's our alumni career coach. Okay, so those are some of the resources. So now this is to put this uh, presentation into the context of um, COVID-19 and COVID-19 resources. So now, like I mentioned from the beginning and uh, COVID or no COVID, and it does not change the foundation of job search. And uh, the foundation of job search, self-knowledge, what's important to you and what interests you? And what kind of ability, what kind of skill do you have to, to offer? and what a mission or value uh, or organization culture that ba match your values and your needs, salary, schedule, location. And uh, so those are the self-knowledge, what's important to you. And it may change and it may have to change your priority depending on the situation. And uh, also as your career continue to grow, you get more skill and ability, your family circumstance, your personal circumstance change, your interests evolve, and that's why you need to reevaluate what's important to me from time to time as a job seeker. Career knowledge, so career option that's within your reach, your industry, the current hiring trend, the current job market. So uh, quite a few resources I shared earlier from the Bureau of Labor Statistics website and also from the uh, economic model that can provide you some knowledge about the industry, current industry trend and the job market trend and the job search knowledge. And so basically this is to uh, work on where you are, from where you, you are right now to where you want to be and how do you make the next step and uh, prepare your resume, prepare for your interview, looking at the job resources and networking, connect with people uh, who may be able to lead to potential job opportunities. 
So self-knowledge, what's important to you, and career knowledge, understand the options out there, and job search knowledge, being able to take you from point A to point B. So speaking of self-knowledge, um, especially during this time when the job market is tight, and especially depending on your field, if your field is not really hiring right now, and you may need to be a little bit more flexible with what you have, you're looking for. And so again, what's important to you that must have, or and that would be nice and absolutely no, no. And so um, one example I can use, I heard a lot of students talking about, um, I would really like to start my career in San Diego area. And so when I ask them the reason why, and their reason is that because I like the beach and the weather is so nice here. Uh, that's probably like a nice addition to the, the job. And but if, if this person really cannot find job in San Diego, uh, I, I think the, the, the beach access and the nice weather is probably not going to be the top priority if this person really have hard time to find job in San Diego. And however, if the student's answer is that um, I have a family here, I have a house here, and my children love their school, and um, it's a little bit hard for me to relocate. So that's some serious consideration. Yeah, I have a question. Yes, it's possible to share the PDF. And uh, if you want me to, if you want me to share the PDF with you, and uh, please uh, just email me. I'll be more than happy to email you back. So here's my email. Okay. Um, yeah, so the situation I spoke earlier, like you have family you need to take care of and the children love their school, you have a house here. Relocating will be a lot harder, but it's not impossible. And however, if your situation is that uh, my parents are getting old and they're not getting going anywhere and I really have to st stay close with them. And so in that case, it's probably top, the location probably become top priority. So each person, each job seeker has different circumstances. And so uh, it's up to you to decide how important it is, certain things you need, like um, the type of uh, job function, location, salary, professional development, advancement opportunity. Those are something to uh, consider. And also as you start your job search, and right now if you just are thinking about job search, have, have not actually started applying yet, um, it can be a little bit nerve wracking without knowing uh, how selective you can be and how um, flexible you have to be. And, um, but once you get started with your job search, when you start to get a sense of how many jobs are out there I can apply to and how many of them actually responded to my application, then you can probably to get a closer sense where the balance is and how you can, um, how selective you can be. And one example, uh, one example I can give you is my own example. I graduated from my graduate program in 2010. That's when the higher ed still uh, recovering from the financial crisis, from the recession, and the higher ed didn't, the, the job market wasn't very good. So at first I didn't know if, if it makes sense for me to apply the career counselor type of a job because usually that kind of job require quite significant years of experience behind it. and. Uh, um, so I was applying to a lot of different jobs, the more entry level jobs, maybe jobs a little bit outside my, um, my outside my most desired location or job function, and uh, just to see what I can get. And uh, of course, those are still the jobs that I'm willing to work if I do get them. Then after about uh, maybe a month or two, when I start getting interviews for career counselor's job, then that's when I start to get more confident that uh, with the current job market, with the current application, the type of application I'm sending out, and actually I am marketable with the, the, the dream job that I was applying to and because I was getting interviews. So that's when I start to uh, become more focused and more selective in terms of location, in terms of job function. And I wouldn't know that if I didn't start the search first. So sometimes you have to get started to get a sense of um, how the balance point between flexibility and the selectivity. Okay, so now um, understand what's important to you. You also need to understand how organizations recruit. And so this list is not exhaustive, and, but however, I list them based on what I consider was the priority and what's the first thing employers may ask when they have a job open. But employers have a job open and usually even before they post that on their human resource website, they're probably already circulating the job posting with their uh, professional contact uh, within the department, outside the department, employees, 
and uh, faculty, professional friends, and hey, we have this position open, and uh, please feel free to share with anybody who may be a good fit. And so uh, the people who get referred to the hiring department through their friend, through their professional contact, usually receive a lot more priority consideration because if somebody can vouch for those people and somebody is willing to put their reputation on the line and uh, speak nicely about those potential candidate, and uh, then definitely that uh, be the random candidate that come from online posting, online job application that the hiring department have never had prior connection with. The full-time job er offers to current and formal interns. Okay, so there is a stat I didn't copy here. According to um, NACE, National Association of Colleges and Employers, uh, I think the number changed from year to year, but the about half of the internships eventually lead to full-time job offers. And so um, no wonder a lot of job posting out there, they look like they're available, but uh, when you apply, never hear back. Why? Because although the companies may have to post a job for everybody to look at, but they decided to want to hire their interns. So outside candidates really didn't have a chance. And so that's also part of the reason that a lot of online job posting are not really available for a variety of reasons like this. They have internal candidates. They want to hire their interns. So now online job posting, of course, online job posting should not be the only resource to use, but they can be definitely very helpful. They really cast a very wide net and uh, there are general job posting like uh, indeed.com, linkedin.com. There may be specialized posting like a biocon for like biology related careers uh, or even company website. So there are for new college grads and there are college recruiters connecting with career center to recruit and conduct job fairs, recruitment events, professional association, now staffing agency. And like I mentioned earlier, and although uh, typically that may not be the first thing for a, a new job seeker who just uh, freshly get a graduate degree or freshly get a college degree to go to staffing agency and look for jobs. But in a typical job market, definitely that's something you can uh, utilize as well reviews of unsolic unsolicited application. That means the candidate job, job seeker just send out resume and cover letter to employers without responding to particular job posting. That's called prospecting. And it takes a lot of time, a lot of work, but people do find job that way as well. Walking up the street, more like the retail hospitality kind of job that have a, a store establishment anybody can visit and probably not the best way to look for job at this time and then executive recruiter. Usually that's more for senior level of, a senior level of position. So um, if you have many, many years of experience and may come across something, somebody on LinkedIn approach you and they have a job for you and those are executive recruiters. So the reason I come up with this list is because employers use so many different ways to um, look for potential job candidates. And then they usually don't use just one job site or one way to recruit. That means uh, as a job seeker, and you need to take advantage of all the channels to maximize your uh, touch point with recruiter and job opportunity. So try not to rely on one source like Handshake or Indeed, because there are so many other, other ways to connect yourself with jobs. Okay, so now if you're re relatively new to job search, this is very important. What do you expect during the job search? And employers usually receive a lot of application for each job. So be prepared to apply to many positions and receive very few responses. And so, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of online job posting, those jobs are not really available. And even if you find a job that you are perfectly qualified for, you apply, you hope to hear back, but how come they don't call you? And so a few reasons, First, like I mentioned earlier, they have internal candidate and they just post this job uh, for the sake of having a healthy competition from the outside candidate. But the chance is that they're gonna hire their internal candidate anyway. And second is that maybe the job is still open, has not closed yet, but they have been uh, interviewing some of the candidates and they're already considering some finalists, but until they give a job offer and uh, the paperwork, contract signed, and until then the job is still open, but new candidate usually don't even get a review. So that's another reason that if you apply to a job that has been out there for some time, and sometimes even if the job still exists, and sometimes maybe you, you're a perfect qualified candidate, but you don't hear anything back from them. So that's why uh, when you apply to jobs, and expect to apply to a lot of jobs, and when they don't respond to you, don't make that personal. And it's very, very common. 
And so keep track of your application, clean up online presence because employers are likely to look you up on Facebook and LinkedIn or Google you up and make sure your phone has professional voicemail. You can use a default a voicemail from the provider. Just don't put anything cute or like prankish. And uh, I had a friend who has a voicemail that says, hello, I cannot hear you, speak louder. And just imagine a very busy recruiter getting to that voicemail. And uh, a college friend may feel that's really funny, but I'm pretty sure recruiters are not gonna be amused. So make sure that um, your voicemail sounds professionally appropriate. And build and maintain your professional connection, avoid burning bridges. Anybody you have worked with before, anybody who had known you for years, or you have taken professors' classes and they really like you, you go to their office hour, they know you well, let them know your uh, job search, let them know what you're looking for. And it's not about, uh, can you give me a job? It's more about that, hey, I'm on the job market right now and I'm looking for so and so type of opportunity. If you happen to know anything, and I really appreciate you can uh, share with me. And uh, uh, focus on the big picture, keep a positive attitude and level of mood. Do not take outcome personal. Yeah, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is, especially in a job market. Uh, even in a typical job market, you apply to maybe 10, 20 jobs, maybe get a couple interviews, and most of the employers are not going to respond to you. And especially in this challenging job market, it's very important to not to take this outcome personal and keep a positive attitude. So why graduate from college? That was another recession prior to the financial crisis. 2003, um, our country was still recovering from dot com boom and my background was in web design. So it was very hard to find jobs. And um, because I wasn't very skilled in terms of job search back then. And um, I couldn't find a lot of opportunities to apply to. I ended up applying to the same job site on the same job site over and over again, did not get any response. And uh, uh, I took that personal as, oh, I'm just not employable and I should go to McDonald's to food burgers or something. And um, so I ended up walking into a strip mall and uh, look for a retail job. And uh, um, actually they have been researched about this. When a job seeker take the a job search outcome personal and when their self-esteem suffer and they stop putting energy and the activity into their job search, that become a vicious cycle. And so um, then, 2010, when I graduated from graduate school, I was a lot better prepared in my job search, but I saw a lot of my younger um, classmates, most of them, those are fresh out of college and they have no experience in job search. They took things so personal. And uh, when they get a job, get an interview, they get super excited and, oh, I got an interview. And when they do not get a job, they get super disappointed. Oh my God, I didn't get this job, what do I do? And uh, I see how then tire themselves out in this kind of emotional roller coaster, and then they end up finding a job that's not related to their field of study. And uh, there's nothing wrong about um, taking a temporary solution, but a, a lot of those classmates, they just completely gave up on their uh, pursuing their dream job. That's quite a pity because many of them actually are very, very well qualified for what they're pursuing. They just did not have the uh, mental and emotional uh, stamina and the tenacity to see through the entire job search. So very important, keep a positive attitude and try not to take things personal. And now the next couple page, there are a few uh, tools that they can help you to do that. So this is a system I mentioned earlier, organizing your job search. And so why is this important? So first, if you're expecting to apply to a lot, a lot of jobs, let's say make a goal, applying to 100 jobs or including talking to many, many of the alumni or mentors or going to career fair, any leads, 100 of them. And so before I fill this Excel sheet to line 100, I cannot expect to have a job. Why? Because out of 100 jobs, maybe I get 10 first round of interview. Out of 10 first round of interview, maybe I get three second round of interview. Maybe out of those three interview, I get one job offer. And so this is actually my real list. And uh, I got my job offer. Uh, after applying to 45. And of course, I try to set expectation a lot, a lot higher, so I'm not going to um, get too surprised. And so I actually have a seven first round of interview, two second round of interview, then I got a job after that. So just imagine if I did not do this, after applying to 10 jobs, no response, and I keep asking myself, am I applying to the right job? And I applied to so many jobs and nobody responded to me. Maybe I'm not employable. 
So this is why it's very important to have a system like this to keep you the mind on the big picture and not to instead of worrying about the job you applied to yesterday, thinking about how you want to fill this Excel sheet to line 100. Now, other things you can do, create your folder and put the uh, job application material in each folder for each job and so you don't mix things up and however, keep yourself organized and build a system that works for you. I'm kind of a minimalist, so my list is very simple. The next page is my coworker, Kelsey, and she color-coded everything. She prioritized and based on a lot of factors, and she's like on stereo on this thing. And so maybe this is not for you, and maybe you would like to use a different system, but one way or another, I highly recommend um, building a system to keep your job search organized. Okay, so job search resources, and like I mentioned already, a handshake and the industry specific job sites and professional association, career fairs, and most of those I already show you on our web page already. So now let me spend a little bit of time before we wrap up. Let me demo the um, demo the, the networking resources we have. Okay, I already know that this uh, the Microsoft uh, Internet Explorer is probably not the best platform. Let me just go here directly from our web page. Oh, by the way. If you want a copy of the PDF of this presentation with all the links, uh, just email me, I will send you a copy. Okay, so we have a question. How would you recommend to organize a table or chart? Sometimes there's no specific position, but you had a great call with somebody from an organization. There might be a position in the future. Uh, so now let me just use an existing example. So. Actually, Kelsey's experience is a lot more elaborate. You probably have a lot more uh, flexibility to, to uh, list different kind of opportunities. You have more elaborate lists like this, but even simple like mine. So my, uh, my list, organization name, the first column. The second column, job title. The third column, current status. Like um, this is a priority. I have not applied yet, but I have to apply before the end of the week or I have applied, just wait for result, or uh, I need to touch base with so-and-so. The fourth and the fifth are the interview status, and the, the last one will be the job offer. So now I can imagine that if you talk to somebody in the organization, you have network there without a particular job lead, you can list organization here. So instead of position, you can leave a blank or give a description that potentially so-and-so. Status, you can list that uh, chat with so-and-so, follow up in, two weeks. And so even a simple, um, organ a very simple chart like this, you can probably um, put a, like a organization you're prospecting right now, not a particular job title, but you're hopeful that there will be some lead. You can definitely um, listen just like this as well. Yeah, good question. Okay, so now let me demo a little bit about those um, networking resources. Like I mentioned earlier, networking can be so important in job search, especially during this time. And just imagine that 80% of jobs are find uh, the candidate who get hired one way or another have connection to the organization. And if you really want to maximize your chance of getting jobs and expanding your network would be so important. So a few networking resources, Ting, I recommend using this first because uh, it's easy to connect with people through this platform. And so Team is USDs, through people growth, we uh, have a USDs um, mentoring program. You don't even need to create an account, you can just use my San Diego login. And so there are groups for specifically um, student populations and their job posting, those are more for uh, mid to senior level jobs. There are discussion about questions and so on, but really the core of this platform is about flash mentoring. So for example, if I'm looking for anything related to finance, I can look for uh, alumni mentor based on their major, based on the location, what kind of degree they have, other filters including their industry and uh, their current company and organization, user type, if I only want to talk to alumni instead of parents and uh, a faculty and uh, um, help topic. And you can reach out to alumni to chat about a variety of topic. But if you're thinking about um, networking, expanding your contact, check the 
networking and informational interview because the, the mentor who is willing to help with this topic will probably be the best networking contact. And they're likely to introduce you someone else they know um, once you chat with them, once you have an initial meeting with them, and they'll probably happy to connect you with their coworkers as well. The best way to expand your network through informational interview. So now just do a sample search. I'm looking for any alumni who's willing to uh, network and do informational interview and maybe you have a background in, let's say, finance. The 269 active user, actually exact match. So now I can use other criteria like industry or location to narrow down my search. Uh, so if I do find somebody I find really interesting, I want to connect with, First, I can take a look up this person's profile and uh, the help topic this person is willing to offer, the industry. So if I decide, oh, I want to talk to this person, I want to connect with her, I can message her directly. So um, if you're not sure how to start, how to write an introduction, here are some templates, but actually we have better template to use than this. Uh, I'm going to show you in a moment. You can also request a meeting uh, as you as you uh, reach out to this person. So why would they respond to you? Well, because those people are, those mentors, they volunteer to be in this database. And when they sign up, the expectation is that if someone, if a student or alumni contact them, they're supposed to respond within three days. And they understand that they expect students to reach out to them. So uh, they're not going to be surprised when you uh, reach out to them and ask, oh, can we do an informational interview? I would like to learn from your tips and advice. And uh, because, again, they volunteer to be in this database, so they're very likely to respond to you very quickly. That's why I recommend using this platform for networking first. So second very, very useful feature on LinkedIn. I know probably most of you have LinkedIn, but I know a lot of students have never seen this page before. This is the LinkedIn alumni search. This is USD's LinkedIn profile. Under that, you can search USD alumni. You can search alumni based on location, based on the company they work for. So for example, you're um, very interested in working for Amazon. So we have 129 alumni currently working for Amazon. Then you can specify, oh, what did they do? Um, what did they study? And uh, what did they put as their skill? And so, uh, so for example, I'm interested in somebody who's doing marketing with Amazon. And uh, if I see anybody I want to connect, I can try to uh, send an invitation message and always ask a, add a personalized note to explain why you're interested in connecting with them. And um, you can also ask a mutual friend to introduce you. So now, uh, in comparison between team networking, uh, the team mentoring platform and uh, um, LinkedIn, there are pros and cons of each. And uh, um, in terms of the number of mentors, there are about 3,000 in team platform and uh, um, if you're looking for some very specific industry maybe there are not as many mentors you can find not as many alumni you can find comparing to linkedin and however if you do find something uh, if you do find somebody on uh, team it's easier to connect in comparison linkedin the connection may be a little bit hard may take a little extra work because a lot of people use linkedin but not everybody actively uh, check their message or actively interact with other people. So um, if you want to reach out to somebody on LinkedIn, if you ask the mutual contact, the common contact, and introduce yourself, that will probably make things a lot easier. And however, the advantage of LinkedIn is that just because it's so popular, just by looking at people's profile, you can see, you can learn so much about their career path. You can learn so much about um, people with similar degree as yours, they work where they are today, and what kind of, what's the first job they have when they graduate and things like that. Okay, so I recommend definitely use both to expand the, uh, uh, your network. And so now if you find somebody you want to reach out to, but you have never tried to do this kind of networking meeting before, so what do you do? So here's a networking guide. So general networking tips, how to use the team platform, and also LinkedIn profile guide and uh, a LinkedIn message sample. So if you want to connect with somebody, introduce yourself, you would like to meet with them and uh, what to say to an alumni, what to say to a recruiter, what to say to a mutual contact to introduce you. And if you do find an opportunity to set up a meeting with an alumni, uh, for the first step of networking, I definitely recommend this activity called informational interview. 
And so that means you're not asking for jobs because those new contacts, they don't know much about you yet. They're not going to offer you a job or connect you with, uh, connect you with a job opportunity yet. And they probably don't feel confident enough to vouch for you. And however, there will be a lot more opening to sharing their story, sharing their tips and advice. And so the agenda of the first meeting when you have a new contact is about informational interview asking for tips and advice, learning from their experience. That's the agenda. So make that very clear when you try to invite them to meet with you. Here's an example of um, introducing yourself. So when you meet with those uh, new mentors, those alumni, uh, those are the typical questions to ask. Ask for advice. What's it like to work in your company? And for what's the current, maybe you can even ask them, uh, how does the company under COVID-19 impact? And how's uh, the hiring going right now? And for anybody who's interested in a similar career path in your field or in your organization, what will be your advice? What will be your uh, recommendation? And um, the last one, and after having a conversation, they get to know a little bit about you. They know about your career interests and what you're looking for. You also get to learn from them already. So you're not a stranger anymore. You can ask them, based on our conversation, is there someone else I may contact? And so uh, at this time, they're very likely to give you one or two additional contact. And this is very important uh, because informational interview is only the first step of networking. And once you get to do, know each other through informational interviews, you want to continue your networking momentum. You want to meet with their colleagues, their friends, and you can ask them based on our conversation, is there someone else I should follow up? And um, I know many people actually, I cannot even recall how many, quite a few, um, they do informational interview and after the informational interview, they ask that alumni that, uh, is there someone else I should talk to based on our conversation today? And the alumni told her that, oh, you know what? You should talk to my boss, my manager. And so then follow up with the manager, the manager get to meet with this uh, particular student and the manager realized that, wow, you have very unique experience and skill we could use in our organization. And, uh, and then that organization created a job for that particular student. And that's one example. And sometimes it's not even tapping into hidden opportunity. The opportunity did not even exist because this person was able to present herself in front of the right person in the right time. And that organization actually created the job for her. That's the power of networking it can do for you. Especially in a difficult job market when everybody's trying to compete for those limited jobs that's posting online. And if you can, um, expand your network, you may be able to find a lot of hidden opportunity that other people have no access to. So after the, after the, the uh, informational interview, stay in touch, connect on LinkedIn, send them a thank you note, very important. Not only is it a professional etiquette to write a thank you note for somebody who spent time to uh, share their professional advice with you, to share their, their experience with you, but also this is a great way to stay in touch and to talk about what you learned during your thank you note. Talk about how you want to follow up with those people or other things they recommend. So they will remember you. And later, um, if they happen to know somebody who's hiring or they know someone else you really need to talk to, they know how to follow up with you. Um, so informational interview, very, very powerful and also very stress-free type of approach to establish the first step of networking because you're not really asking them to give you anything beside their knowledge and advice. You're not asking them to give you a job or forward your resume to their boss. And so really there's not a whole lot of pressure there as long as they have time to do that with you. And especially those people in the mentoring database, they're very likely to respond to your request. Okay, so um, to wrap up this presentation, so um, again, if you want a copy of this PDF, please just email me. And um, this is kind of like a to-do list, kind of like a summary of what I covered today. And uh, maybe keep a to-do list doing your job search to help, to, 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 to help you uh, organize and uh, think about, oh, have I done this today? Or maybe it's time for me to review my progress and uh, reevaluate my goals. And so this uh, to-do list I share with the students. Okay, so Career Development Center is here to help you. So you have any other question that uh, maybe not covered by this uh, presentation and you have some uh, very individualized uh, career questions or concerns or uh, you want to work with a, a career counselor one-on-one -on -one to do interview practice or review a resume and then you can make an appointment through Handshake and uh, we are, our office is fully available right now through virtual, through Zoom and uh, 
uh, actually we're quite busy and we have a lot of student requesting appointments right now. So thank you so much for, for uh, being here today. And uh, uh, so um, let, let me stay here for a few more minutes in case you have any question. And again, let me, um, okay, so let me go to the chat. Let me post this. Um, survey. So this is about the survey about this presentation and any feedback you would like to provide, please use this link. And again, let me type my email address again. So if you want a copy of this presentation or uh, if you have a question, you want to email me, please feel free to contact me directly. So I'm going to end the recording right now, uh, but I'm going to stay here for a few minutes in case you have any question. And also before you leave, and if you would like to, maybe just type in the chat, maybe one takeaway you learned from the, the session today and I really appreciate that.